are back. <laughs> and we haven't been back in a while. We have been off for what, two weeks now? I think so. And we haven't actually been off. We've actually been very busy. I just had to go see my sister and I made the decision to be invested in the time there. And then when I got back, it was hit the ground running and get to work because we had a lot going on. So picking up the camera was just, a, it's important, but I had a couple other things that needed to get done like immediately when I first landed. And it's also been raining. It hailed this morning. It's sunny now, but it's windy as well. So we are still beating the elements again. It's still spring in Colorado. It's still spring in Colorado. So we have little birds coming again and they have to stay inside. So hopefully again, it's just for a couple days and we will bring you along on everything we've had going on behind the scenes right now. We just need to actually get this set up because again, babies are sitting in the post office right now and we don't want them to die. Post office is about to open, so we're about to leave, but. Right, and you guys, it, giving you all this information is important, but their little lives are slightly, a little bit more uh, pressing right now. So we're gonna set this up and get this ready. If you're wondering what we are doing, and what this new bedding is, Frank got a genius idea. So I realized that every time a batch of chickens comes in, I'm dropping eight to fifteen dollars on a on a bale of hay or straw rather to basically give them enough bedding because we uh, we have to keep replacing that bedding. Uh, they muck it up pretty quickly, so we have to keep replacing it. And what I realized is that we get that's a lot. Oh well. <laughs> so I realized that we get a lot of junk mail and we get a lot of boxes and we get now we're reverse bedding. We get a lot of stuff like that. So I started looking it up. Um, all the junk mail and stuff like that it has to use something called a, a vegetable ink, so it's compostable, it's safe for chickens, all that good stuff. Uh, with the cardboard and anything. Well, how else. is that more eco friendly than our clothing? And with the cardboard and everything else, I make sure to remove any tapes or adhesives, labels, stickers, anything like that, that the chickens might try to chew and choke on. I invested in a $40 paper shredder, and hopefully with that, I'll be able to use that for years and never buy straw for baby chicken bedding. Investment will pay itself back because all this stuff will also break down and compost, so then I can turn that around once it's infused with plenty of nitrogen rich chicken fodder and I can put that into my garden. Which is crazy because nowadays the market is so uh, crazy when it comes to buying things that like it actually is more cost effective to buy stuff on Amazon than it is on Walmart. Yep. And it's way more effective so you're gonna have to pay for shipping and all that. And like I really thought about it and I was kind of disappointed because I was like oh we're losing a lot of jobs. Actually kind of and kind of not really because we've added jobs in other places because now the people that are sorting, the people that are shipping, the people that are actually unloading planes um, and doing things like that got jobs, they're just different. Instead of stocking dresses on racks, you are now um, doing what I used to do at Walmart and opening boxes and sorting them, but you're opening massive boxes and sorting the clothing that came from China and then separating it out into packaging. So those jobs aren't gone, they just shifted. Anyway. Is that true? Uh, yeah, I mean, anytime new technology advances, that's the general trend in markets, is that certain job classes are eliminated, but overall employment remains the same. So anyway, hopefully I'll be able to turn that paper shredder and turn my what would otherwise be waste or kindling for the fire into nice chicken bedding and eventually compost, and it'll keep my chickens warm and safe, and it'll grow my veggies, and yeah. Cool. Um, we did do a quick experiment with these guys because we switched up from pine shavings that we were using last year to straw to start off this year. I know a lot of farmers have been using pine shavings for a very long time, decades and decades, and haven't really noticed any issues with their flock or anything like that. If, the, if there's a better way, I'll try it out. Um, straw seems to be more comfortable on them anyway than the pine shavings. Uh, there are some potential issues with pine shavings, so we want to switch off anyway. And then after doing some research, we found out we could just shred our mail and shred any cardboard we have and put that in. And we did an experiment with some of the chickens that I have where I put some of the straw bedding under one side of their light and some of the paper bedding on the other side of their light, and they seem to prefer the paper. It's comfier. So, yeah, it's, it, it's probably comfier on them, on their feet, whatever. So they seem to be pre preferred. And they don't eat it. I've yeah. noticed that they don't really eat it. 
Yeah, you think they would, you think they would eat it more, but I see when we had straw, I would see them running around with pieces of straw in their mouth all the time, um, and with these, they really seem not to. They don't so. they don't want to peck it. Like they just yeah. they're like, oh, it looks like dirt. It's just dirt. I don't eat dirt. I eat seeds and bugs. So we're gonna go pick up the chicks now, yep. get them settled in, yep. and then we will update you on a, another couple things that we've had going on around here because I don't think we've updated them on all the pond updates. <laughs> and the second brooder you finished building while I was in Texas, yep. and then I never shared like my experience in Texas and what I did. I just wanted to spend time, like I said, with my family and enjoy just some you wanted to be present. I wanted to be present with them. So let's go pick up these chickens and we will update you on what other things we had going on. Because like I said, we haven't seen you, but we have been super busy around here. So very quickly, we will show you guys what we have going. So I think you guys have seen this upgrade, but if not, let me update you guys. We have radiant heaters now. Essentially, it's just a super hot filament in there but it's still cooler than a red light. So if they fall in, there's much less of a risk of a, of a fire, fire hazard. danger. Yeah. Um, and because they are not emitting actual visible light, light, like light in the visible spectrum, um, they allow the chickens to actually sleep at night, have a natural circadian rhythm, and that in turn re actually reduces their pecking and overfeeding behavior. We have their feeder with their chick grit on top and then water. So they fill up their little crops with grit right away and get some food as they're eating. And that helps so, reduce pasty butt. And that helps reduce pasty butt. And then we got our water set up. We only have 25 coming this time, so that should be enough room for the first week. Um, but hopefully we can get them out hopefully in a couple days. In. We are on our way to pick up these birds now. Over the last couple years that we've raised chickens, we've learned that the red light is not the worst option, but they never get to sleep and actually go into a natural cycle of sleeping. And so they're constantly eating. And when they're constantly eating, they're just growing at such a rapid rate. And if their food ever gets so low that they are fighting for food, they start attacking each other. Once they attack each other, they'll start pecking at them and they start seeing blood. Now, everybody that wants to eat vegetarian fed chicken, um, I highly suggest reconsidering that <laughs> because chickens are not vegetarians. They're, they're omnivores. They're omnivores and they're mini dinosaurs. They're literally dinosaurs. Like, yes, they will munch on plants, they'll eat seeds, all that good stuff. Um, they'll also eat fish, they'll eat lizards, they'll eat insects, lots and lots of insects, they'll eat and if mice. They and if they really think that they're going to starve, they'll start cannibalizing and eating each other. Yep. So in order to fix that, we were like, well, we got to figure out something to get them on a normal natural cycle that would be more natural to nature. And we found that changing out a red light actually makes them go to sleep. They wake up, they're hungry, they eat, and then they just proceed with their day as normal. Usually they'll eat a little bit more right before they they go to bed, so their little crop is full. Um, but for the most part, they do a pretty good job at not cannibalizing now. This year we have not had one issue with any single one of these birds cannibalizing or eating each other or pecking each other. So these lights are working very well. If you raise chickens, we highly suggest looking into radiant heaters because it lowers your your chance of fires in your house and like starting a fire and it also is more natural for those little birds to sleep and actually enjoy their life. We, we know red lights have been used successfully by many many farmers for many decades but if there is a better way now we'll, we're, we're gonna try it out we're gonna go for it if it's better for the health of our chickens and therefore better for the health of our consumers at the end of the line um, you know we're, we're gonna try to try to do that instead this is kind of the cold hard cash side of things that some people don't really like about farming um, but it, but it is cheaper in the long run because the, the initial investment is more expensive but at the same time infrared bulbs don't burn out at nearly the the rate that red light bulbs do so they don't need to be replaced nearly as, as often. often so your year-to-year -year cost on them is much lower and on top of that, it saves us money because these chickens do cost us money. We have to buy these chickens. So it's, it saves us from losing money on chickens being pecked. Pecked to death and eaten by another cannibal chicken. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Which we, I don't think we've ever actually had that happen. We've always no, caught them in time. We've caught them in time because they stay so close. If they start attacking each other and crying, I hear it and I can stop it and immediately fix the problem. Whereas some of these huge corporations that are raising birds by the 10,000s, they don't have that much 
quality well, it's, time it's, with their animals. It's impossible to have that much oversight and be that intimately involved, which is one reason why people like us because we are a smaller farm. We are a smaller we farm. We give each animal that individual attention. We won't be mega farmers and we're not going to replace Tyson, but we are going to try to teach people how to do what we're doing because we, if you're doing it for your family, it's so much cheaper than buying meat from the store. If you're trying to sell it to customers and compete with other um, corporations that are raising chickens, it, it gets a little bit more dicey when it comes to money. Thank you, Kirby. So <laughs> we are here and we're gonna go pick up our chickens and we'll see you here in literally a second with our chicks and you will hear them. And we got them. Look how little they are. They're tiny, tiny little chicks. I'm using the block as a, uh, there we go, go. Wait, wait, wait. Alrighty, they're all set up. They are doing okay so far. We did fix their water a little bit and then they kept getting caught behind their feed so we just pushed it up against the wall. Every single batch is different, so we have to adjust accordingly to every single batch. They have full access to their water, their food, and then the warmth. Now we sit here for about an hour just to make sure everybody's good. Okay, that's my finger. I'm pecking because there's food right here. There you go, good job. So we figured we would get on here and update you guys on what we've had going on behind the scenes since you have now missed two weeks of Frabby Farm content and we wanted to update you on everything we have going on around here and what we have accomplished in the last two weeks. To start off, mine is easy. I went to Texas, spent some time with my little sister, met her new baby, and then I spent a lot of time watching movies and watching a baby sleep. So that was fun. And I think that's called relaxing. I don't really know because relaxing to me is working on a lot of stuff. So starting off indoors real quick, I have accomplished a little bit. I have made dresses. I have successfully fixed some of my dresses. I have lost a lot of weight and my best friend helped me realize that when I was in Texas that I'm pretty much just swimming in my clothing now and none of it fits. Most of it is falling off of me or just very big. So I could either fix my clothing or try making new clothing or buying new clothing but new clothing with inflation is super expensive. So to start off I fixed several of my skirts. This is one of them and made it a little smaller. I made this skirt tighter, brought in the seam so that it was a little bit smaller for me. I also did that with three other skirts that I have. And then I went shopping for clothing. So I went to a couple of the thrift stores and a couple of normal stores that I used to shop at but like they wanted for a cotton dress that was kind of ugly honestly um they wanted like 300 dollars for it i ended up going to the thrift stores and i found a couple of shirts so there's this old banana republic one it has like puffy sleeves and then like a little tie for the neck and it's super cute made out of cotton and linen i think if i'm not mistaken on this one no nope, cotton and silk then i bought this one that is just linen super cute just a simple black button up and then I bought this dress at Old Navy. I was shocked with the quality that Old Navy has. So this is 100% cotton and I got it on clearance for $14. It is a really cute simple dress. I also got busy and made some dresses so I made this black dress out of shirt fabric I bought at Joann's and this white dress with little bow ties. This one had like sleeves and this one I decided to make it with bows at the top and it's just these two dresses that I sewed and made for myself and I think I paid about ten dollars for the fabric on each one of them so they came out pretty cheap to make so I have that and now I have a couple of outfits that I can go into the summer with 
I'm probably gonna have to get rid of a little bit of my clothing because it no longer fits me and that's okay. I have a couple more projects to make some more dresses and some more skirts and I'm working on my silk pillow cur curlers. And so anytime I have a free moment, I usually spend a couple minutes trying to sew and create some of the stuff that I've been talking about for a while. So moving on, your turn, Frank. So first thing I did is I upgraded our pump. Well, our pump last year broke, but it was only pumping about, I think 1200 gallons per hour. This one pumps 4,000 gallons per hour. So that'll also give us the opportunity to expand the pond. I also got a filtration system going. Um, so this is an external filter, so I can bury this in the ground or do whatever I need to do with it to make it more presentable. But uh, basically water goes in here, gets filtered around, there's a bunch of filter media in there, and then it comes out here, runs to that waterfall, and then I have this secondary hose right here. So when I turn this switch, it basically runs it backwards, washes out all the filter, and all that gunky water comes out through that hose. So we can use it to completely empty out our pond, huh? Yep. And irrigate our raised beds. What else did you get done? I think in the last video you guys saw us start this brooder, but we finally got the second brooder done. It turned so. out slightly better than the last one. And as you can see, we're using our chopped up paper for bedding. So if you're wondering what's going on, because it kind of looks like a little bit of a science experiment in here <laughs> with all kinds of cords and cables. Um, so we have a camera in here so we can keep eye, keep an eye on them. And then we have their food and water. They also have access to the outside through that little door. And then we have the radiant heater. So so the reason I went with this particular brand, which I'll, I'll mention their name because I'm really, really happy with them, is they're uh, the sweeter heater. And uh, they have two features I really like. One is that their filament is basically wrapped in insulation which means that the surface temperature of the thing doesn't really get over about 180 degrees which is way too uh way too low to start a fire this guy's sprawling <laughs> I, see, I see him i see him <laughs> uh so even if it fell flat on its face it could not start a fire um and if the heat does build up in there it has an automatic shut off if it does fall and the heat does build up in there and it gets hotter than that 180 degrees it would still uh shut itself off automatically so very very safe right so the heater itself has a temperature control and if it gets too hot it'll shut off and on top of that a second measure just to make sure and we can actually control this from our phones it has this little gadget gizmo thing that's connected to it and i control the temperature um on my cellular device so if it gets too hot during the day it just shuts the whole system off and it just stays dormant for the day and i need to work on putting these cables away but as of right now that's what we have going and then we will adjust it and work on it as we continue growing chickens in here but they are thriving and loving life beep, beep, beep. cool so while i was in texas frank got this brooder done and completely situated and set up here and then we have our first one that we had already built right next to it so we have those two and then right here we have obsidian and matilda so those are our two rabbits and they're kind of just hanging out it's kind of hot out today so they're not really doing much but hi hi sid hi sid and they're just living their life he's gonna run out <laughs> Hey buddy, oh touch him, he's warm. Is he? Was he laying in the sun? <laughs> yep. <laughs> so Sid is growing really well. He is happy and their silver their silver came in really well, so they're actually growing really well. And they're huge. He's a whole big bunny now. He's a big bunny. He also oh <laughs> Sid. Go back in. Go back in. He also has the option to dig a tunnel underneath here if he wants to. He's kind of lazy and hasn't wanted to. But if he wants, this entire area is pretty much fenced in underneath the dirt so he can dig down two to three feet and then he can go the entire length and width of this little rabbit tractor underneath himself. But he doesn't seem very motivated to build a tunnel at all. <laughs> he just wants to eat and take naps in the sun. What are these guys doing? They are okay. That was perfect timing for the video, you guys. These guys too. Abby. Where these guys are choosing. Like, oh my god, the mice are digging holes in. Nope. Oh my goodness. These guys apparently are burying themselves. <laughs> these guys do. Wow, you guys.
Oh goodness, they're dust bathing. They're doing their own thing. What are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? Are you taking death baths? Good job. We have a couple of areas that look kind of crazy, but we need to fix up this wood. We also added some wire little tunnels around the yard so that they can, our chickens can run around the yard and if they feel unsafe, they can hide underneath the wire and the hawk can't get them. These guys are just our meat birds, so they stay in this little area and they're enjoying it. They should be ready very soon to move out to pasture and they'll no longer be here and we can put in the next new batch there. We also have some horseradish coming back up from last year. The chickens tried to eat it and then realized it was bitter, so they left it alone. <laughs> and then the rest of these raised beds are ready to go. When we cleared out our pond and cleaned it up the first cycle and took out a bunch of the debris and stuff that had settled to the bottom, we actually used that water and Frank's filtration system to water all of our raised beds and get them in tip-top shape and ready for planting and transplanting our seeds and all of our plants. And believe it or not, there's three kois in here somewhere. Yeah, we have three kois. So our goldfish kept- and They're pretty like- They're pretty big. Yeah, they're pretty decent size. But we have three kois in here and we'll probably buy a couple more kois. Our water was getting so dirty and nasty because we had so many goldfish that decided to repopulate themselves last year. So we actually took the goldfish out. It needs more plants. It needs more plants. We um, added some plants in and then the chickens ate them. So we are now on our way to pick up some feed and order some more feed. <laughs> if you are new around here and you have no idea why we have so many chickens and our backyard is so busy looking, we actually sell at farmer's markets during the summer and we sell meat. So we raise chickens for meat that are raised on organic, corn-free, soy-free feed and they are raised on pasture. So they spend the first month uh, being raised in those brooders. That's just because if we tried to raise them out on pasture, the weather would kill them because they would be exposed to everything and they're not feathered out yet. They don't have the ability to thermoregulate their own body temperature. So yeah, they need to be kept in a more controlled environment. Colorado weather is pretty drastic and I'm pretty sure everybody has these issues because I've watched a lot of farmers that are like in England and they seem to have these same issues as we do um, but we will go from having all four seasons in one day it'll what was it two weeks ago it was snowing Frank sent me some videos it was snowing which turned into rain which kind of tapped into a little bit of hail but then went back to snowing and then the Sun came out to end the day so we have crazy weather and then a few days later after that we ended up having some crazy wind storms that were 70 miles per hour. We deal with a lot of cold fronts and a lot of crazy wind and then drastic weather changes that are very rapid. I feel like everywhere has has like everywhere has challenges. Those, those are just ours like like Abby said if you live on the southern, you know, the Gulf Coast somewhere, you're going to be dealing with hurricanes. If you live in the Midwest, it's tornadoes and wind storms. Uh, I mean, if you uh, you know, live in the northeast, you might deal, you might get floods or precipitation, stuff like that, precipitation issues. So everywhere has challenges. These are just ours. We get wild variations in the weather in very short amounts of time and it's dry as I'll get out here. High desert. <laughs> <laughs> We've learned how to work around those weather elements and how to successfully raise animals in those crazy um, weather phenomena and then still keep some of the labels that our people are actually catching on to so like organic is a big one that's been popping off non GMO is a huge one that people are very concerned with people are finally catching on to an understanding that like in the pursuit of convenience we've actually lost a, uh, we have actually lost a lot of the quality of our food and how our animals are raised so we are trying to bring back traditions and things that we thought were dead and our generation is honestly realizing and waking up that the world has been spinning for thousands and thousands and thousands of years nobody actually knows exactly how long it's been doing it there's guesstimates but we do know that one thing is consistent plants grow and they grow every year at a specific time of the year and they die at the end of the season and they continue that and there's just this lovely ebb and flow that works in our world that our seasons have challenges but 
we do survive off of growing in those seasonal changes. So we're not the first to live in this environment and thrive in this environment. But we will be the last. But we will, no. <laughs> no. In the last week, we've made a couple calls and sent a couple messages. Just seeing what our customers enjoy having and what seems important to them. Because we thought that obviously like the business world, the cheaper you can get it, the better. But we have actually surrounded ourselves with people that are aware of the quality of food. So surprisingly, they didn't want cheaper. They were willing to pay a little bit more as long as we could keep that organic label which just means that our food is not grown with pesticides, chemicals, or... Yeah, GMO free and it's grown uh, according to, what is it, FDA organic certification. Right. It is something that's very important to us. Like, we eat very organically. Well, that's the road I need. That's the road we need. Lame. Look at this lovely drive. It's such a beautiful place to live. So, we did a little bit of research. Yeah. So, what is it called? Research so and development? It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we called uh, five of our most most loyal, uh, longest customers, the people that have really bought kind of the most chicken from us, and uh, we put the question to them and said, hey, you know, what, what's more important to you, price or product? So basically we lined it out and said we can charge this amount and we can get our feed locally, but it won't necessarily be organic or GMO free or those, those sorts of things. Uh, or we can make sure it's organic, GMO free, all that high quality buzzword stuff. And, but it's going to be a dollar per pound more because it, it just, that's just what it costs. Um, and unanimously they said, we want the organic feed. Several of them actually said, we'll buy your chicken no matter what, but we would really like the organic feed, which I really appreciate, but please buy the product that's, you know, gonna work for you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so, so it, was, it was very, very interesting that people are willing to- Pay for quality. Uh, I mean, well- Pay that... a little bit more for, for a product that's a little bit better. But the crazy thing is that we're saying that like it's kind of crazy to think about, but we do that. We are willing to pay more for a product because we know it is raised right. It's not raised in a feedlot. It's not, you know, completely neglectedly raised. Like, I don't know how to explain it. The way that we raise our animals, we actually keep it small scale enough that we can keep an eye on the birds and see if anybody's attacking each other. We talked about this this earlier in the video that we can actually keep an eye on them and see who's attacking who and you know separate and isolate situations that would honestly lose um that would honestly the other, end, that would end up in loss for our birds yeah we, we were able to be hands-on enough because of the small number of birds that we're dealing with um, that we can save birds that would be lost in larger, more commercial circumstances. We have been able to reduce those uh, those numbers quite a bit through practices like uh, pumping the chickens full of antibiotics and de-beaking. We can all oh, we can we can make our meat better by making them fight for food in such cl cluttered environments with so many birds by taking their beaks off and full then of pumping them full of antibiotics you can take to fight all the sicknesses. Down, down to like two to three percent. Oh, you wonderful? could take your mortality rate down. That's so wonderful that we can literally that we can literally mutilate birds to not have them kill themselves. If you're, if this is fascinating to you, we've actually, from last year, we realized when they've started attacking each other and why they would attack each other, and we got rid of a lot of those issues. So this year, the only loss that we've had so far has been to um, situations that are out of our control. So like shipping to our um, house, we lost a couple of birds within one of the storms that we had, um, yeah. and it just created- Basically, we had a blizzard that had rolled in, and a lot of the- Turn off the truck. A lot of the mail planes and stuff like that got delayed uh, for like 24 hours and that was enough, you know, 24 hours inside of a cold plane or a cold truck was enough to, uh, enough to mess them up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, knock so, down some of our chickens. Future goals are to actually raise our own chickens and actually hatch them on our property in the future. But that is future Abby and Frank goals. As of right now, all we can do is continue shipping from the closest hatchery that we can find. And then once they get to our house, that is where it becomes our situation and control. And we've gotten rid of all the loss. Like once they're in our hands and yeah. in our 
um, if, if we if we ex so we've gotten a hundred chickens so far. If we exclude the first batch that we that was delayed and we lost some from, we've lost zero chickens. Yeah. So all of our all of our losses so far have come out of the first batch of twenty five that we ordered. Out of the other seventy five that we have, zero losses. Wow. So. That's pretty cool. Last year we actually didn't lose that many either. I think we were down to what three percent last yeah. year. And a lot of it was just rather learning. It was a learning curve and learning that those crazy weather phenomena, like the random windstorms and rain that we had, yeah. where the rain was falling and instead of falling directly, it was falling, falling in every direction and it ended up wetting our chickens. And two of our chickens last year decided to find the comfiest spot and that was laying in an actual puddle. puddle of water so yep. those are the only two we actually last on lost it's on not pasture like i can run out and check on them while there's you know golf ball size hail pelting us so. <laughs> i know so anyways we are now here to pick up feed so let's go pick up feed and then let's do it let's do it oh my arm from holding this camera hopefully this is giving you a little bit more insight of what we have going on because showing our everyday things like picking up feed is kind of hard but hopefully this gives you more of an insight anything else today I don't think so.